Welcome back to the GP Productions podcast. Okay, welcome back to the show. And today I've got a very special guest, a man that gave me a chance right at the start of this podcast and came on the show to talk about his company. And since then, we've had some of his fighters and they always bring over great views. And it's Mr. Sean Donnelly, President and CEO of the Lingerie Fighting Championships. How are you, man? Well, thanks. Uh, pleasure to be back. And you've had some massive guests. So I don't know if I started it. Wow, you've, you've done amazing things since then. Uh, I watched well, you- a lot of your uh, big episodes. Well, you got the ball rolling. I think I this is the 220th episode, maybe. I've been going every week, at least two shows per week, just hitting them out, hitting them out, and just seeing what happens. But you yeah. were there in the, it was probably in the first 20 episodes. I'm not exactly sure. But since then, then we got to cover. We had Michael Larkin, who does a great job in the LFC podcast, which we'll talk about in a while, and some of the great fighters as well, you know. And the girls like always bring over great views from their other projects and stuff like that. And no, I appreciate it, man. Well, they enjoy coming on, and uh, you know we, we've been we've been kind of watching as your channel's grown, and it's you know rooting for you, and you know you've had some amazing guests. Uh, Carol Baskin, I thought was an amazing interview. Yeah, I've had Carol on now twice, and a lot of people from Tiger King, and people lately, people that from Tiger King have been pitching to come on my show. Yeah, and that's just that's just fucking crazy to me. I think like some people would see Carol and then oh, I don't like Carol, but I want to come on and talk about my side of things. And yeah. they're all they're all great characters. That that is still my guilty pleasure. Uh, you know, I don't know if you watch that series. The uh, the scripted series, Carol versus or Joe versus Carol. And I'm watching that now, and it's you know my wife keeps laughing at me for still being involved in this, but you know it is entertaining. I'm actually watching it myself as well, and and my yeah. wife won't watch it. Rachel won't watch it, no. So oh, I'm on... uh, yeah, my son, uh, the original Tiger King, you know, she sat for one episode, and then you guys are idiots. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm only on episode two now because I only get to watch it in my own time. So in yeah. between doing everything and work and stuff, I will I will get to finish it, though. I'm actually quite enjoying it, though. I think uh, it's it's a bit... I don't know if it is a bit amped up because the people are amped up in that show anyway, but I'm finding it enjoyable. I just find it such an odd, you know, I don't remember see a biopic, which and it's basically it's a series, but it's a biopic, uh, where you're that familiar with the characters and what they look like. So, you know, in some of those characters, they did an amazing job of, you know, matching up uh, others. You know, I, I thought Kyle MacLachlan as uh, as Howard, you know, doesn't look like, got the mannerisms, obviously, you know, doesn't look like him. But I don't remember, you know, watching something where I know what every character looks like uh, in a, you know, a biopic. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, and and because it's so recent as well, like this Tiger King thing is still new for them yeah. to lash out something like that in such a small space of time. Amazing work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, we're going to talk about your company. And for people like, there might be people that didn't see our last interview. And for Lingerie Fighting Championships, do you want to just lay it down the line? What is it? Um, what is it that you guys do? Well, we're a, uh, a lingerie uh, sports league uh, kind of. We're we're a mix of uh, MMA, uh, pro wrestling, you know, you know, high school gymnasium wrestling, a lot of grappling, uh, and you know, we do a reality series, and uh, uh, you know, we do about four to six shows a year, and and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're huge on social media. A lot of fans that uh, you know really kind of gotten into it. Uh, you know, mentioning Tiger King, which I think was one of the big. Uh, phenomenons of uh, COVID. Uh, COVID was, you know, as much as I hate to say, it was a huge thing for LFC in that a lot of, you know, people have nothing else to do looking for new entertainment. A lot of people found LFC. So uh, we certainly came out of COVID a lot bigger than we went in. 
Yeah, and I think it's probably unusual for a company that I know you rely on fans a lot, but I know you like to do live shows as well. So was it hard not being able to do them? I think you done one. Was it at Sturgis, and then there was a big gap. Then was there? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did Sturgis in 2020. We did one show there uh, in 2021. We did three shows in Sturgis. Uh, so that that was a great uh, opportunity for us. Uh, you know, it, it introduced us to a you know a whole new fan base. Uh, we, we did another event without fans during COVID in in Vegas, and then you know came kind of came out of it. Now, uh, of course, we're allowed fans again, so you know a lot more fun with the fans. But the great thing with Sturgis is even in the the middle of COVID, you know, we still had obviously you know hugely attended events, and uh, uh, the girls enjoyed it. We, you know, we had to obviously be very careful uh, safety wise and and uh, respect people's. Uh, you know, different levels of, of concern over COVID. And, and I think we, you know, found a good balance in doing that and still, you know, being out there in, in Sturgis. Yeah, it's a very uh, unique venue, but somehow it, it it just works as well. Did you find many reservations with people kind of getting back into events or how have you found it stateside? No, not really. Uh, you know, I, and I thought, especially in 2020, you know, it was a, the worst of it. Uh, August 2020, I, I, you know, we got approached to do Sturgis. And, I, you know, I told them right up front, I, you know, I, I got to talk to them. I don't know if my people want to do that or not. Uh, so I reached out to them and uh, overwhelmingly, uh, they they wanted to do it. I mean, we obviously we addressed, uh, you know, we we gave people the option to stay at a hotel in Rapid City and just be uh, driven into the show. You know, you do your show, you get out, you know, no interaction with the fans. Uh, other people, you know, had less concern. They wanted to stay right in the at the grounds and and have the full Sturgis Motorcycle Rally experience. So so we we you know tailored it for people different people's concerns. We I think we had maybe three people who just didn't want to go at all. Uh, you know, just didn't want to risk it. And, and of course. Yeah. We, again we respect that and you know they're back now yeah uh since we last talked there was a few changes on your social media and things like that and i think your website has since changed is that is that correct and can yeah, you explain after... to people what the changes are yeah, we ended up, uh, you know, we'd uh, had the same webmaster uh, for, you know, nine or 10 years. And uh, when when I first set up the company, I, I didn't expect it to become as big as it has. Certainly didn't expect to be a, you know, publicly traded company. So we partnered with a webmaster uh, where he owned the domain. He owned, you know, everything other than our Facebook and YouTube, which I'd already set up. Uh, so, you know, it was a big decision to leave that because it meant losing, a, you know, a very well-established site. Uh, but, you know, there were issues that made it, you know, I had no choice. I had to, I had to do that, make that decision. Uh, so we brought in a, a great new webmaster. We set up our own site, which we own. Uh, and I expected it to take at least a year to get back to the levels we were at with the old site. And to my shock, it's taken less than two months and we're now bigger than the, the old site was. Uh, so, you know, I think a credit to, to our fans, to the new webmaster and, uh, you know, well, mostly our fans. They they want to see our content. They, of course, as soon as our content was taken off the old site, they came to see it on the new site. And you know, we're very very grateful for that and thankful. Yeah. Did it feel like kind of? Do we worried about that move? Just kind of build it from scratch, or was it just kind of? Did you see it as just an opportunity to just go again yeah. and just see see how far you could take it? No, I was I was really worried because you know like the site you know it had taken ten years to build it to that level and it had you know gotten to the point where uh, it was earning pretty good money so you know it was you know shutting that completely off that money was gone uh, and then starting a, a new site you know I didn't know would would people come over quickly or would they just you know like, you know kind of be fed up with it and not not bother I, I think one thing that made the decision easier is our YouTube had absolutely exploded. And we actually work with a company out of the UK who uh, remonetized us. We weren't monetized. Uh, so it, it had gotten to the point where our YouTube channel was doing just as well as our site. So it, it certainly, you know, it was kind of a, a bit of a parachute for us to, to make that decision to sever ties because at least, you know, well, the, the income's been replaced. Uh, but again, the, the speed at which we've grown up the new site at uh, lfcfights.com is, you know, it's it shocking. I didn't expect it. Yeah, when you talk about YouTube monetization, it's it's something that that gets me like all the time. It could be a thumbnail. I think it, it was somebody saying, uh, let's just say a bad word on one of my podcasts. One word, and they found that word, and it was a pretty big interview, and they just demonetized it. And I can you can appeal these things as you know yourself. 
and yeah, and, it didn't, and, and it didn't that, work out why, for me. You know, working with this company out of the UK, where this is all they do, they specialize in uh, combat sports, YouTube monetization. Uh, I think we're a special challenge for them because of the nature of our show. Uh, you know, when I was handling the YouTube channel, so then we wasn't, it was monetized, but it didn't make a lot. Uh, we ended up getting you know, demonetized uh, because I didn't know how to do the appeals. I didn't know how to, uh, you know, now everything before we put it up, he gets it reviewed by, by people. The problem was that, you know, so much of YouTube is now, it's all reviewed by bots. And they, there's no, there's no wiggle room with them. It's just, you know, if they see skin, it's, you know, it's not allowed. Uh, whereas when you show it to people, uh, you know, and, and show them like, hey, this airs on, you know, 2000 cable systems with a PG rating, TV 14 at the, at the 14 V at the most for violence. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not adult. It's not, uh, you know, it's not even R rated. Uh, you know, the, the, when you actually get to talk to someone, I think that makes a big difference because you can kind of, you know, plead your case and, and, this this company, uh, Rackna Media, out of the UK, you know, just do an excellent job, much better than I could have done. Big ups to them. Did you, did you find the the problem was just uh, was it the thumbnails or was it the it wasn't it couldn't have come down to violence because like on YouTube, like oh, yeah. you see horror oh, movies and yeah. and everything there. Yeah. No, it, it, it just came down to, you know, especially if the thumbnail, uh, you know, it, it, and it could, it could be the most minor thing. You know, a, a lot of our fighters are, are you know, fairly uh, well endowed. Uh, so if, <laughs> if they're wearing too tight a shirt, you know, the, it'll get flagged. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, and it's concerning because, you know, our social media has become so puritanical. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem to reflect society. It reflects this tiny little fringe group that get offended by everything. And they're, they're for some reason, so scared of this tiny group. You know, we, we get approached all the time without see people, you know, trying to cancel us, trying to, we just tell them to get lost, you know, and they go away. And that's, I, I just wish it, people, more people would do that and more people would realize what a small group it actually is. Yeah. Um, the cancel the culture cancel is, is crazy, crazy, like at the moment. At the moment. Yeah, and it's um, a tiny, it's not, you know, the media want you to think it's everybody or it's this great, big, powerful group. It's not. It's a few, you know, nut jobs that, you know, frankly, we would have ignored 10 years ago. We, you know, we just wouldn't talk to them. Uh, but now, you know, because media is so desperate for clicks, you know, and, that, and that's why you'll see things, you know, it will be, you know, well, I just saw uh, Emma Thompson, you know, fans are outraged at her wearing a fat suit. Read the comments. Nobody's outraged. Everyone's, you know, thinks it's ridiculous. So it's like eight people in the world complained and the media decided, oh, we can run with this. And and it just, it gives it that impression that it's so much bigger than it really is. What's the worst or biggest complaint you think you've ever got? We ironically, it, and it's always men, women never come after, it's men uh, <laughs> who just decide that, oh, you know, feminists must hate you. It's like, no, actually, a lot of our fighters are feminists. Uh, you know, we, we, we support a lot of the feminist uh, uh, ideals, which, you know, that women can do anything men can do, you know, they, uh, they can do it just as well. So a lot of our fighters are feminists, but it's always guys who come in, oh, feminists must hate this. This must make feminist heads explode. Nope, they actually uh a lot of women come to our events, so you know, we're we're fine. Yeah. Michael Michael Larkin, your your good podcast host there. Yeah. Beauty, strength, and dominance. See, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And that, you know, that's what our show is. You know, is it you know provocative? Of course it is. It's you know, it's uh, it's it, it's a sexy show, but uh, you know, it's certainly not taking it. And that's the other thing, you know, that the idea that we're taking advantage of, of women. Anyone who's met our fighters. You couldn't take advantage of them. They'll, they'll take advantage of you because they're stronger than you. Yeah. And I've talked to many of your fighters and all of them are totally focused on this thing. And like, they they want to do this. They're probably excited for the next event. Oh, they, they have a blast. It's fun. You know, they, they don't have the hangups that, that some people have, you know, uh, you know they're, they're beautiful. They have great bodies. Uh, they work like hell to get those great bodies and they're not afraid to show them off. The people who always think it's, you know, oh, this is a terrible thing are usually people who don't want to put in that work, you know, and I'm guilty of that myself uh, to get those bodies. So, you know, I just, I find it silly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, again, it's such a small fringe. You know, when they contact us, we just, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch, you know, turn it off. Simple as. Uh, you're coming off a big event there. You came back full capacity in Vegas. Uh, it was about, what, two months ago now? 
uh, yeah, last month is uh, May, Friday, yes. May 13th was our uh, LFC 36 boot camp four. Uh, and it was great. You know, the second, uh, the second show that we've now been allowed to have full fans again. And uh, it, it was just, it was an especially great crowd. I found it was uh, you just a uh, very energetic, you know, they were just really into it and they had their favorite fighters and, you know, some had brought signs from home. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And in terms of looking at the future for a next event, is there anything currently in the pipelines or something you're working on or where? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to take the summer off because we're, we're actually, we just partnered with uh, Jeff Timmons from 98 degrees uh, and we're, we're doing a reality series with them with uh, some really big celebrities involved. So that's kind of going to tie up my summer. Uh, and then we're going to come back in October, uh, probably with back to back shows, uh, uh, October and we're also looking at maybe doing a show in Mexico in November so so we're, we're working on some things uh, and then you know we, we have a few other things going on this summer that uh, and of course in the meantime we're we're still putting out a ton of uh, you know a reality series new episodes come out every couple weeks uh we just started a you know with our roku channel we just started a new talk show called get wet which is a talk show shot in the pool uh so we've got lots of, of stuff on the go and, and until we get back uh with another event yeah and how's things going with the with the roku network and the channel uh, it's going good uh you know we, we still we need more content we're you know we need more original programming uh which is again something we're working on this summer you know this, this new reality series is going to be huge for us and uh you know so it, it's gone off to a good start uh you know certainly not hbo just yet but uh you know we'll keep plugging away yeah do you want to do you want to break down the reality series without giving anything away and what's the general what's the general vibes and where it's going to go uh, well, the show with Jeff focused, is. Uh, are you going to be yeah, focused it's, it's on actually, specific players? Uh, okay. It was a show he's been wanting to do for a while. Uh, having seen some of the stuff LSC's done, uh, he, he thought you know it'd be a good fit. So you know, approached me. We, we have a mutual friend in, in Vegas, so that uh, that's how we we, we met. Because you know, certainly wouldn't have met Jeff Timmons otherwise. Uh, and and he wants to you know, it's a, it's a show kind of near and dear to LSC's heart. It, it's going to be a search for the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, we're going to travel all over the world. You know, every continent's going to be represented. Uh, you know, we're going to go into Africa and find you know beautiful uh, women. Uh, but it's it's not going to be just about appearance. It's also uh, you know accomplishment. Uh, you know, the the most beautiful woman in the world might not be an Instagram model in Hollywood. It might be a, a nurse in Nigeria. Uh, so you know, we want to you know. So it's kind of part travelogue and and part contest. Uh, so it's going, to, it's going to be a lot of fun, going to be exciting. It's going to be a big contest uh, running for uh, a few months beforehand to, to get our contestants. Wow. So hopefully somebody from Ireland applies and you get to come over here and have a couple of drinks. That would be nice. I'd, yeah. I'll, I'll try. I'm, I'm not going to you know, influence the voting based on what cities I want to travel to, but <laughs> yeah, Ireland would be, it's always been on my, on my list. An Irish redhead. That's what we need. Pale skin, like Seamus the wrestler. I, I could be, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about our good friend, Mr. Michael Larkin, and the work that he's doing for you with the LFC podcast, doing some great things there. Um, is that going to be part of the Roku as well? Yeah, the, uh, the uh, you know, with the launch of the Roku channel, uh, you know, I've, I've talked Mike into uh, going from an audio only podcast to uh, to a video podcast. Uh, so he, he switched uh, over for that for, for uh, season four. And I think there's 16 episodes already up. And, you know, Mike's like you, he's prolific. Uh, he's, he's relentless. He's he, yeah, he's a little relentless and, uh, you know, like, you know, like he's doing great content. And uh, uh, so, the, you know, it's going up on our site, but I've got like a backlog of his uh, of, of episodes. So I'm going through them as, as quickly as I can. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy and we'll give him his props here tonight. One thing I will say yeah. about him, though, is every time he gets photographed at an LFC event, he's got wandering eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I do always send him the pictures. I was like, what are you looking at here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Gonna... You know, as long as I worked with him, that was, you know, when we brought him out to be the uh, the ring announcer for the booty camp events, uh, it was the first time I'd actually met him in person. So, uh, you know, that was a, you know, really cool thing for us. And he's now done uh, done the last two shows. He He's going to be our announcer for the booty camp events. And then, of course, we have uh, uh, AJ Kirsch, our regular announcer for the, uh, you know, for the main events. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so like you've got a lot of a lot of plans at the moment with with LFC and the brand and different shows and things like that. So you're going to be even if you're not doing events till you say October, like you're going to be very very busy man over the next while. Yeah, it's gonna, it's you know, I mean, but it's gonna be fun. I mean, it's it's such a cool project, and uh, you know, the the talk show is so much fun, and, and you know, the reality series. Uh, you know, we're we're I think we've still got three more seasons in the can that we're now you know doing post on. So there's tons of content, and it was just a matter of kind of getting caught up on on so much of it with the uh, with the post production. Yeah, I've seen on Facebook you're looking for. Uh... What was it? Was it a judge for an upcoming event or a timekeeper? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we've got a contest on our site right now where uh, uh, we're going to pick one lucky fan that's going to win a trip to Las Vegas for the uh, um, the show in October and airfare and hotels included. And they're going to be a judge, which, uh, you know, of course, is the best seat in the house. Like, you know, there's front row and then in front of front row is the judges. Is this open to uh, all around the world asking for a friend or is it just uh, an American thing? I think it's only uh, Canada and the U.S. We're, we're working with a company called Emotive, and it's a uh, uh, you know they do text marketing. So what it is is it's a way to uh, to get uh, you know we, we've always kept emails, we've never kept cell phone numbers. So you know we want to put a really cool contest uh, to to get the uh, cell numbers for for the Emotive's marketing. Uh, but I think they're only allowed to do it in Canada and the U.S. and you know a lot of opt out rules and all that sort of thing. Is this for VIP members on the website, or what way do people? No, it's for anyone. You don't have to be okay. a, a member. Uh, just you know, when you go to the the new site at lfcfights.com, you know, first thing it, it's a pop up that comes in, you know, uh, with the details on the contest and if you want to enter or not. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about the website again. I have it here. So, if we're to go in here. And we just scroll up here to VIP members. Okay. What benefits would people have of being a VIP member, Sean, on your website? Well, I'd say you get to see, you know, everything. Uh, you know, it's all uncensored. Uh, you, you get to see all the, you know, all the previous events, all the episodes of the reality series. Uh, you'll see there's a schedule there of uh, what's being released. So uh, today, no, yesterday was the, no, today, the 30th, uh, was the release of the, the season premiere of Get Wet on our site. Um, so you get that sort of thing. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's doing really well. We, we do, you know, with this emotive, we, you know, we have these conference calls between, you know, video calls between them and, and us. Uh, and they, they showed us our numbers. The, the click through rate that we're getting is double what they expect from like a big name brand. Uh, you know, so it, it just tells that we, we have a cool offer and, you know, the contest is cool and it's kind of resonating with people. Yeah. Well, look, it was great to catch up with you again today, man. And I wish you all the best with everything. And hopefully we can catch up before those pay-per-views come back to back then in October. Awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll be watching, uh, see who you get next. Yeah. Who knows? It's uh, it's just send an email and just hope for the best. Yeah. But I, I, I've tried like to get some crazy people that you wouldn't even believe of telling you, but, uh, you know, why not? If you can only just yeah. send an email and just see what happens. All they can do is say no. It's the worst they can do, right? No, the worst is when they just don't reply at all. <laughs> but that, and that's like 99% of the time. <laughs> uh, you, that 1%, though. You only need the 1%. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.